Team Gold by Shady Oak, read by the author. This fan fiction is in no way endorsed by Rooster Teeth Productions or the founder of Ruby, Monty Ohm. Please support the official release at roosterteeth.com. Chapter 1. Origin. There is nothing like the sound of running water in the desert, the promise of life, the power of nature, a cold and translucent comfort even in the hot sun, an unstoppable force that defies everything around it. It's more precious than any stone or currency in what has now become known as the kingdom of vacuo. The term is still new, especially since its citizens have no king. The only rulers in these lands are the ones who have proved themselves before others. It wasn't the most civil rule, but nature made it universally agreed upon. The current ruler was still being agreed upon as well, and the citizens of Vacuo never cared for politics. They weren't even accustomed to peace. The only thing they had to be grateful for was water, or what little was left of it. A child's cry in the desert was a death sentence. The grim were drawn to fear, and fear is an emotion every child had to grow beyond, or they'd never grow taller than a single foot. Yet somehow the mothers of Vacuo were never in short supply. Infirmities were being rebuilt, but tradition kept the population stable until this work, chosen by the men, was complete. Many children were born during the Great War, and very few of them were given legal names. That was something else to get used to. Vacuo was no longer under the authority of Atlas. That was something else they were grateful for. Faunus and human walked side by side to any oasis they could find. The rivers between them became the highways and centers of travel, and it was on the side of a river that a child's cry was heard. Everyone noticed and instinctively drew their own weapons, knowing that the Grimm were not deaf as they'd wished them to be. Nothing could be done for the little one. When the scene remained calm apart from the noise, everyone simply moved on. Occasionally, a bystander would make sure the child wasn't injured, but turned in frustration when they saw the child was weeping simply because she was alone. After she realized she had drawn more attention to herself than she intended, she separated herself from the angry faces and hiding in the grove. Her pointed canine ears hung down and her tail was drawn around her ankles as she drew in short and staggered breaths and attempted to compound to her isolation. She had always been alone. Her parents left for battle, and she was too small to understand why she was taken from her walls weeks later. She no longer dwelt in walls. She slept under rocks and trees, and it was there she became accustomed to loneliness and almost regarded it as a friend. It was the first time she had seen people in weeks. It confused her, and that unfamiliarity made her miss her friend. She pursued it again by hiding from those who looked at her in ways, well, not quite unlike the Grimm. She knew well enough from their eyes that the only thing you should do is run, and that's exactly what she did. She never stopped running. Fear was her motivation, and it upset those larger than her. She began to wonder why, but was cut short when a series of screams rushed from the riverside that made her ears rise and ring. She was afraid, a description more apt to describe her than her own name. She knew how the Grimm always appeared when she was most afraid. She had drawn them here. The people who were angry at her were now suffering because of her. Throwing aside her instinct, she ran towards the noise and saw Beowulf charging the people along the river. This sight made her feel... Afraid? No. Water was life to her. Whenever she had a need, it was always found there. She was always angry that the Grimm would dare rob her of this comfort. She didn't feel afraid. She felt angry. She jumped down from the tree and heedlessly charged the monster. Despite everything else her body was telling her, she wouldn't let the creature hurt the water, or anyone near it for that matter. It was then the creature fell. Being only a child, her ability to reach places larger creatures couldn't was the only advantage she regularly took advantage of. The only thing she could find was a knife that fell from one of the boxes discarded in the panic. 
She remembered years back when she saw someone brought into a home who died less than a minute because of a cut on their upper leg. It wasn't much, but the trauma she saw in her times of hiding became as familiar as a dream you just woke up from. As her heart beat faster as it ever had when she ran, the Beowulf paid her no mind anymore as it was drawn to the terror surrounding it. She yelled and forced the knife into the beast's leg, earning a roar louder than the crowd, and caused the beast to throw her off and give her its undivided attention. She landed on her back but quickly adjusted herself. Its glowing eyes reflected a mind with only murderous intent that was about to be acted on. That is, until a much larger knife appeared from the beast's mouth before its roar had even left its throat. Huntsman, the people nearby whispered at the scene as it calmed itself. The blade was retrieved as the monster dissipated into nothing. The tall man looked down at the girl who had demonstrated such courage in buying him time enough for those nearby to get away, and asked her a question. What's your name? Havaliah, she answered. The huntsman cocked his head slightly. Measuring the uniqueness of the name so close to the end of the Great War couldn't recall the source of it. Could you spell it for me? he asked, bringing himself down to her level. Havaliah shook her head. Holding out his hand to her, he gestured to where the people began once more walking towards, and said, Would you like to learn how? She didn't hesitate to respond. The situation was the last reminder she needed that there were benefits in having a roof over your head. He looked back at the knife she put into the Grimm's leg, and he tossed it back to her. She blocked her face from the blade instinctively, but still managed to catch it without harm. Good. You look like you could use some time in the shade.